It's that time again, ladies and gentlemen. Things are getting super autistic today. Who's ready for the first Tesla forecast of 2023? From James Stevenson. I cannot underscore enough on Twitter. Haters might guess that Tesla's recent deep price cuts would wreck any prospects for 2023 earnings growth. I hate to disappoint them, but record quarterly deliveries and earnings are still coming in 2023. In this video, we're looking through James Stevenson's epic full 36 tweet thread. James is an invaluable asset to the Tesla community and in Elon's own words, his favorite Tesla analyst. Really, if you like charts and numbers, sit back, relax, grab some popcorn and or lube up and enjoy the show. And if you'd rather watch paint dry than look at these charts and numbers, one, rest in peace, good luck with your wealth creation goals, and two, why don't you check out today's exclusive Patreon video instead. Zero numbers, but a lot of very important facts. The single most important question you can ever ask yourself. If you're not a member on Patreon, you can join with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. First chart, Tesla quarterly deliveries by model and factory. Actuals through to 2022 and then forecasts after 2022. Fairly self-explanatory here. The short story, new factories equals new production equals more vehicles being produced equals that's how Tesla continues to scale up their production deliveries. James's estimates has Tesla exceeding 900,000 vehicles delivered per quarter in 2025. That'd be close to an annualized rate of about 4 million vehicles per year, mid-decade two years from now. We're now looking at Tesla global deliveries, S3, X and Y, quarter by quarter, as we can see over time. Model S and X in blue and red here. Irrelevant blips, honestly. If Tesla deleted these products, no one would f***ing care. It's a great place to debut technology and drive costs down, but honestly, they don't move the needle. They contribute a little bit more in terms of outsized profits, but again, if they literally didn't sell these products, it would barely move the needle. It's all about the mass production vehicles. The three and Y here in white and gray, as we can see, three fairly consistent deliveries are growing over time, but nowhere near as meaningfully as Model Y in gray here. Again, you can f***ing count on it. Model Y, soon to become the world's best-selling vehicle globally by unit volume. Give or take around a million units per year. The world's best-selling vehicle selling a little bit more than one million units historically. Then, fast forward a little bit more and Tesla Model Y is going to be selling two times as many units per year than the world's best-selling vehicle ever has in a single year. And then probably three times and probably four times more, give or take. That's my own personal estimate. So I think three and Y combined annually, total addressable market may be around four million units per year. That may even be conservative. This, of course, is before the Cybertruck and Tesla's $25,000 more affordable vehicle, which is gonna make Model Y look like a fucking joke. But again, the trend is what we really wanna focus on here. Can anyone pick a word? In fact, I'll give you a hint. A word with just two letters that describes the trend in Tesla's global deliveries quarter by quarter. Ready? Up. This is what you wanna see. We're now looking at Tesla global deliveries, the Model 3 versus the Model Y, the three in white, the Y in the gray here. Once again, we can see some growth in Model 3 deliveries over time. A big crossover point, Q4 2021, Model Y sold more vehicles than Tesla's Model 3. And in Q1 of 2022, significantly more. Q2, same. Q3, even more. And by Q4, Tesla's Model Y coming close to double the deliveries of the Model 3 and still growing rapidly. If anyone's wondering, by the end of 2024, James has Tesla combined 3 and Y sales approaching just very roughly about 3 million units per year. These align pretty closely with my own estimates. We now look at Tesla quarterly production and deliveries, historical data, and some predictions again. The trend, two letters, one word, up. Wait, two letters, one word. Why does that sound familiar? It kind of reminds me of, of one of my favorite films. Moving along. I thought I'd add James's commentary on this particular chart. My forecast assumes Tesla will grow earnings over the next several years by making full self-driving so compelling, more buyers will pay for it at a higher price before long. Totally agree with this point, by the way. It's a pretty hard sell right now for FSD, not gonna lie, like 15,000 US dollars. Don't get me wrong, if you can afford it, it's worth it. But that's a lot of fucking money. Just imagine when these things can fully drive themselves. You don't need to be paying attention. Game changer. Looking at historical data for Tesla adjusted EBITDA by quarter, actuals through 2022, and then projections again. What is the trend here? Up. Not just up, but up in an exponential manner. If I were to guess, the single most likely data point to correlate relatively closely with Tesla stock over the long term, and don't get me wrong, it's going to be a loose correlation. There's going to be a lot of volatility on the stock, but I think this would be it. We're essentially looking at Tesla profits, not growing in a linear fashion, in an exponential fashion to the f***ing moon. This is a great breakdown, how Tesla makes an average $1 of revenue. At the bottom of this chart, historical data, very first entry here, 80 cents of Tesla revenue coming from automotive sales, not including regulatory credits. Regulatory credit sales accounting for 2 cents, which is not what the bears have been and were saying. Tesla was entirely reliant upon these, but anyway, let's not go down that rabbit hole. You can see automotive leasing, a spec, energy, 7 cents, service and others, 6 cents. Over time, we can see huge growth in Tesla energy in particular. And this is understandable for those who don't know, Tesla's currently ramping up a gigantic mega pack factory. And last I heard, they had approximately $40 billion of orders already. Gonna take a while for them to fulfill those. Everyone seems to be sleeping on Tesla energy, including myself. My valuation model has absurdly low estimates for Tesla energy, like ridiculous. 
they're going to age worse than some Wall Street analyst estimates for Tesla vehicle deliveries. The reason I'm doing this, give myself a buffer to be conservative. But as we get more clear data about this factory ramping up, I'll make some adjustments. And now, how Tesla spends an average dollar of revenue. If I were to sum this chart up in a few words based on James's estimates over time, Tesla's costs associated with actually producing vehicles falling and the majority of that gap being made up for in pure earnings. In short, the more green, the more money Tesla's printing. We're now looking at Tesla non-gap earnings per delivery, as in per vehicle delivered, and this will really put things in perspective. The estimates here from James, this is trailing 12 months. 2023, Tesla to make approximately 11 and a half, maybe 12,000 US dollars per vehicle sold in non-gap earnings. And yeah, this is after the price cut announcement. Probably not the narrative you're currently hearing from Tesla bears. And if we back out regulatory credits, numbers barely move. Still looking at over 10,000 US dollars per vehicle sold in non-gap earnings in 2023. I'll read the commentary on this one as well. This chart illustrates how ending the wave, as in the delivery wave, affects Tesla's quarterly finished goods inventory level. The more vehicles you produce per week, the harder it gets to deliver all of them by the end of each quarter. No f***ing sh Sherlock. Thanks for telling us, James, but for real though, some people actually do need to hear this. <laughs> Production in orange, deliveries in green, beginning inventory in blue, and ending inventory in pink. As we can see over time, these grow. Why? As James points out, the more vehicles you're making every quarter, the harder it becomes to deliver every single one of those vehicles in that quarter. I hate to have to explain this, but after some of the truly absurd commentary around Tesla's Q4 deliveries versus production, why is there such a big gap? Oh my God, there's no demand. It is necessary just to once again explain. Tesla doesn't count a vehicle as delivered until it's actually delivered to the customer. There's a gap between when the vehicle comes off a production line and when it gets to a customer. It's very, very dim to draw the conclusion that Tesla's struggling with demand, they have an oversupply of vehicles. By looking at a single data point, the difference between Tesla production deliveries in a single quarter and assuming that that gap means they didn't sell those vehicles, not that those vehicles are in transit. Again, I hate to have to explain this, but I do. Another chart that requires some explanation here. This chart shows how much expense hits the income statement per quarter related to the performance plan Elon Musk has been working under as CEO since 2018. All but around $0.004 billion of the maximum $2.283 billion expense that can hit under this stock compensation plan has already hit. This chart is fairly self-explanatory. Huge stock-based compensation expense throughout 2020 in particular coming into 2021 but as we stand today they do not move the needle at all another very important point here from james tesla's gross automotive margin excluding regulatory credits has improved through 2021 to 2022 even as revenue per vehicle decreased that's hard to do gross automotive margins here in green average selling price here in gray we can see a huge decline in average selling prices obviously the introduction of the mass market vehicles the three and the y that's going to happen tesla also prioritizing delivery of performance variants etc the higher margin higher profit vehicles so over time tesla faces two battles to maintain margins approximately where they are today give or take mid-20s maybe 30 percent overall on average while at the same time continuing to drive their average selling prices down and it's time for my absolute favorite chart Every time this gets me, this is the chart, the one chart. Today's video could have literally just been this for 10 minutes. Just stare at this fucking chart until it sinks in. We're looking at Tesla quarterly revenue in millions from the company's inception to the present day. Obviously still awaiting Q4 numbers. I just want to highlight a few very important moments in time. 2012, Tesla did $413 million in revenue for the full fucking year. 2013, Tesla did over $2 billion in revenue for the full year. 2015, Tesla doubled that. Two years later, they doubled their revenue to over 4 billion. Guess what? Two years after that, almost tripled their revenue from around 4 billion to almost 12 billion. Two years after that, another more than doubling in revenue to almost 25 billion. Guess what? Two years after that, another doubling of revenue. And to put things in context, Tesla's Q3, just the third quarter in 2022 in terms of revenue, was more than Tesla's entire 2018 revenue as a company. Another way to look at this, in 2022, just the first two quarters of the year alone, almost the same as Tesla's first three quarters in 2021, more than the entire 2020, and obviously significantly more than 2019, 2018, blah, blah, blah. Tesla is approximately doubling their revenue every two years, and they're still just getting started. Like I said, this is the one f***ing chart. Please take the time to let this sink in. And now, this is Tesla's next 12 months non-gap EPS. And now we have historical data and James's forecast for Tesla average FSD revenue at time of purchase per delivery. In other words, if you factor in every Tesla vehicle sold what's the average fsd revenue per vehicle many customers don't choose the option some do so this is the average total fsd revenue including paying customers who actually bought it and those who didn't choose the option historically this number less than two thousand dollars per vehicle sold as of 2022 james estimates an enormous in fact exponential increase in average revenue per vehicle sold and i totally agree again the more capable this software becomes the more people are going to choose the software package Duh. remember that word two letters again 
describes this chart perfectly, doesn't it? We're looking at Tesla global deliveries from 2018 to 2022 and James being a little bit of a troll as well. On the right here, attention Tesla Q, please fill in your 2023 forecasts here. The point he's making, if they don't fit in that box, the idea that Tesla's not growing, they're not a growth company, they're overvalued, mm, doesn't really stand on its own two legs, does it? I just do want to emphasize here, Q1 2018, Tesla delivers less than 30,000 vehicles. By Q4 2021, just a few years later, Tesla had more than 10 x their deliveries. How long until they 10x again? For the finance nerds here, Tesla P ratio compression and range. Let me translate if you're not super autistic and a total finance nerd. The lower these numbers go, the cheaper Tesla stock is, according to one of the stonk market's primary metrics, PE ratio. We can see now, Tesla stock is cheaper at any point today than it's been in 2020 or 2021. Significantly cheaper. Tesla's quarter end PE at the end of 2022, 28. End of 2020, 322. And some very hilarious commentary from James here. Some Tesla Q believers like to claim that Tesla's operating expense numbers must be fraudulent because they aren't increasing by enough. And this is actually a serious point that many of these Tesla Q virgins actually, like literally, the numbers are too good, it must be fraud. Like this actually is an argument that is made quite regularly by these dolts. They just can't fathom. Not possible, therefore it must be fraud. Does not compute. So these are Tesla's operating expenses. Actuals through to 2022 Q3 and then a forecast. As we can see, it's been a mild increase. Tesla's operating expenses have approximately doubled from early 2018 until late 2018. 2022, almost doubled. Obviously, these will continue to increase over time. Should go without saying, but in case anyone's getting lost in the weeds here, as Tesla, the company scales up, they have more factories, more equipment, more everything. It's gonna cost them more to continue to operate their business. But the question is, will their operating expenses grow in line, in proportion to revenue, or can they grow at a lower rate? Meaning Tesla becomes more and more profitable over time, and spoiler alert, the answer to that is obviously yes. This is where we're gonna see Tesla's insane operating leverage really come into play. Revenue is gonna grow at a staggering rate. Operating expenses are gonna grow at an incredibly low rate. They will grow, but nowhere near as fast as overall revenue, meaning Tesla will continue to print more and more money over time. And finally, this absolute monstrosity, Tesla Q4 revenues and expenses per diluted share. We're looking at a breakdown of total revenue in Q4. On the left here in green, automotive revenue, $6.53. Energy revenue, 45 cents. All other revenue, 59 cents. Breaking that down further, we've got expenses here from top to bottom. We've got GAP, EPS, total stock-based compensation, restructuring and other, taxes, SG&A, blah, blah, blah. If you guys want to nerd it out and pause, feel free. The biggest expense overall, obviously, the cost for automotive. Second largest energy, the table on the right here showing the breakdown of adjusted non-GAAP EPS of $1.03. Again, if you want to nerd it out and pause, feel free. As always, there's a link in the description to the full tweet thread. Highly recommend you guys and girls go through it. I've just run through some highlights here. And James will be making some individual videos running through each of his own charts in much more detail, doing a much better job than I have. So stay tuned for those. But I really wanted to share these. I think these charts provide some valuable insights into where Tesla's is coming from, where they're at now, and where they're heading to. Between you and I, I think James may be a little bit conservative on his estimates, but this is coming from a guy with a very clear optimism bias, so who knows. But in either case, I think the main takeaway from these charts is quite simple. It's that word, that two-letter word we discussed earlier. Everything that matters, up. Profits, deliveries, you name it, up. If you were to overlay Tesla's stock price over the last probably 18 months on top of these charts, you'd notice a little bit of a discrepancy. While everything that Tesla's doing is going up exponentially, the stock price has been collapsing almost as exponentially. Makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? And don't forget to head over to Patreon and check out today's exclusive video. No numbers, no charts, but far and away the single most important question you can ever ask yourself at any point in time. Seriously. So, see you over on Patreon. Love ya.